Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is going to be a Archangel Messages pick a card reading. I am trying to focus a little bit on advice or guidance for how you can get ready for your next big shift. I am recording this on November 25th, 2020, and I know that so many of us right now, myself included, are feeling completely, totally exhausted just there's so much energy coming through and I actually thought after the Scorpio new moon that we'd get a little bit of a break before the December solstice but it turns out that is not the case and I think that all of these energies coming through are trying to get us ready to receive as much of that solstice energy as we can so we are all leading up into some kind of you know some another big shift another big transformation and I haven't been able to get really a grip on what exactly is coming in. I guess that is part of the surprise. We might not really get to know what exactly is coming through for us. So that's why I want to focus more on the process of what we can do to open up as much as possible or release whatever we need to release kind of to get ready to make the most of the big shift that is coming. And if you're watching this later and you know the solstice isn't relevant for you, this still applies because just line it up with whatever the next big transformation is for you. And if you're watching this video, there is something on the horizon coming in within the next couple of months, I would say. So go ahead and pick your cards. It's just cards numbers one, two, three, and number four. Hey, pile number one, welcome to your reading. If I were to sum up all of this energy in one word, it would be gratitude practicing gratitude. Um, you guys have been summoning a lot of energies for yourself. You have been working on manifesting, you know, you've been working on aligning yourselves with your highest timelines, and all of that is going to be coming through. You know, you've got the magi here, which would be the magician. You've been working in all areas on of your life. And this Magi card, I mean, it's about alchemy. Oh, and I just noticed it looks like there's a, there's a road here. I don't know if you can see. I know these holographic cards are a little bit difficult to see. I'll try to show them. Um, the background here, this kind of uh, champagne flute, it almost looks like this cup, is on a road. You guys have been on the path. You've been walking the path of your manifestation and I feel that your focus recently has been a little bit external. That's not to say that you haven't been doing your inner work or anything, but you have been trying to really finally see the external manifestations of all of that inner work. Uh, luckily for you guys, Nine of Cups, the wish come true card, your wishes, your desires is going to be coming through. This is and, and look, it's actually trickling down from above. You have the wishbone here. Can you guys see that? In the middle of this card, there is a wishbone. That's really funny, actually, because um, I'm recording this on November 25th of 2020, and to, this is the day before American Thanksgiving. Um, I'm Canadian, so for me, Thanksgiving happened back in October, but I am living in the U.S. right now, and my husband is American, so we're going to be celebrating American Thanksgiving tomorrow. And you got a wishbone here. I mean, I don't eat turkey, but <laughs> there you go. Um, when you guys split the wishbone, you are going to be coming away with, you know, the bigger half, the half that says that you get all of your wishes. Isn't, there, isn't that the weirdest tradition? I remember as a kid, um, me and my sister would split the wishbone, and that's that's a little bit of... <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird tradition to me now, uh, looking back on that, but I know people still do that, and there it is. And also, all of these cups built up like a fountain. I was really struck by how this will all be overflowing from above, as if this cup at the top is, it's the cup that gets filled up first. That is your higher self. That is your soul star chakra. It's getting filled up, and all of this is trickling down. So, <laughs> you know, I just heard, like, trickle down economics. Um, I take that as a metaphor, not so much of you know, getting into economic theory here, but more thinking of trickle down energetics, right? You are going to be receiving all of this from your higher self, from your soul, a star. It's going to be coming down, coming through. That's why all of this manifestation, all this alchemy you've been doing is going to be working because you've been doing it in alignment. You haven't just been 
um, doing the 3D thing of working hard and, you know, trying to play the game. You have been aligning with your life's purpose, aligning with your soul's mission. So <laughs> basically, you know, I know that I was asking the archangels to come through with some advice or guidance on how you can get ready for your next big shift. But for you guys, it looks like all of this stuff that you've been getting ready for, that you've been trying to manifest, it's coming through for you no matter what you do. Like this is, this is already happening. It's the wish come true card, nine of cups. You're good to go. But um, gratitude, gratitude. We have that actually confirmed here twice. First of all, four of cups, right? The four of cups I've been seeing come up a lot recently and I've been kind of trying to figure out like what's going on with the four of cups. <laughs> uh, I mean, I know a lot of you read cards, so you know this is kind of apathy, kind of boredom, kind of just not feeling that great. Um, I've been, and the antidote to that, right, the, the solution to the Four of Cups is to be more grateful for what you have, to appreciate what you have, you know. Instead of looking at the three cups that are upside down, look at the one glass you have that is full, that has wings. And here this chalice at the top here, not only does it have wings, but it has an eye, has an eye. So it's focusing on what you do have, being grateful for it, and practicing, you know, that whole cheesy schmoozy thing about practicing gratitude and giving thanks. And some of you are going to be watching this, like you're going to be Americans watching this on American Thanksgiving, which is cool. This totally applies to you. Um, you know, don't forget to be giving thanks for what you have. And that is that literally energetically makes room for more of what you have to come in. You know, uh, just something that I do personally is when I find a penny on the ground, I make sure to really appreciate that penny because you know, then more pennies can come in and eventually dollars and hundreds of dollars, right? And to double confirm this thing about gratitude is Archangel Uriel. This card says divine wisdom. And this card in particular, I mean, maybe Uriel means something to you. Maybe you have a relationship with him. I know people tend to forget, you know, when we think of archangels, we think like Metatron, Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel, right? But there's all these other archangels. So you might want to look up Uriel or, you know, just kind of feel into his energy if you want. But in this deck, um, this card is specifically about practicing gratitude, practicing gratitude um, and how that will help you walk the golden path. You know, you're walking the yellow brick road. Just don't forget to be appreciative of the fact that you are, in fact, on the yellow brick road and be bold and make the first move. Um, this really comes back to this Magi card to me. I think with this, it's also don't forget to pat yourself on the back. You have really been doing the work. I, I feel like you guys have not been sitting around waiting for the universe just to give you stuff. <laughs> you have been very deliberately and consciously walking your path. And this card is inviting you to to continue to do that. This might be an action that you're being encouraged to take. In fact, if you were sitting around going, should I do this thing? Should I take that risk? Um, should I put myself out there? This could be anything. It could be asking somebody on a date. That is sort of the obvious thing with that card. But I think a lot of you are thinking of something more to do with your spiritual journey, you know, starting some kind of creative project or a business or a even just a conversation with people, be bold and make the first move. And also with the cardinal moon, for those of you watching this uh, November or December, the next cardinal moon is going to be the new moon in Capricorn, um, which is also a solar eclipse. So watch out for that. I think if you're in North America, that is on the 20, uh, no, sorry, the 14th of December. I think you'll have to check. No, wait, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Capricorn season doesn't start until the solstice. So I don't know. I don't know when the Capricorn new moon is. You guys will have to look. But yeah, that is highlighted for you. Something around the new moon in Capricorn some kind of opportunity um, that will will require action on your part. So 
really, I think your guys' reading is pretty straightforward. You, you don't really need to do anything else. This shift that is coming through for you, you've already set yourself up. You've already walked the path. It is just kind of... I, I'm actually thinking like graduation goggles. Um, you're kind of looking behind yourselves. I can see you at the end of a path and you're looking back, looking at how far you've come, um, really appreciating all, the, appreciating all of the lessons that you have learned as you have come this far. And just take a moment to kind of savor it, to enjoy it and to integrate all of it, to practice gratitude and then get ready to walk through the door, to be bold and make the first move on this new opportunity coming through. And that's all you have to do. You guys have already got this not really anything else to say about it. So congratulations to you guys and happy Thanksgiving for anybody having Thanksgiving when you see this and hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, pile two, welcome to your reading. You guys have awesome cards with just like a little blip in between. You've got, <laughs> look at this, 10 of cups. Everybody loves to see that. <laughs> and wheel of fortune, which normally we love to see that, but it can be a little anxiety inducing when it's coming off of a really awesome card like the 10 of cups, right? You know, if you get for example, the tower and then the wheel of fortune, you know, like, yeah, you know, I'm going to recover from this catastrophe really quickly. But the wheel of fortune coming after the 10 of cups can kind of make you feel like something happened. Something suddenly went wrong. Why is everything shifting? You were pretty happy hanging out with the 10 of cups, right? But it's going to be fine. This, this uh, little blip you're going to have isn't, it's not a catastrophe. It's not um, anywhere near as bad as you think it's going to be. It's just going to be refocusing your attention on the two of cups, on the two of cups. So it's a little bit difficult to articulate what exactly I think is going on, uh, on with this. It's like, just to give you an example, um, you know, 10 of cups is like your community, your family, and your friends, right? So somebody hanging out in the 10 of cups energy is, really, really enjoying their friend group, their family, just feeling like they are surrounded with a community of love. And then this wheel of fortune comes in and turns the wheel, shifts your perspective. And suddenly it, maybe you feel separated from your community, separated from your soul group, like something has gone wrong. Um, and you know, you might have a moment of panic, a moment of anxiety going, Hey, like, is this a tower moment? It's not a tower moment. It's the wheel of fortune. It's just th everything shifting. So your, your time in this 10 of cups, this time with your family, with your friends, um, it's not that that's really going anywhere. It's more like you have gotten everything you can out of that environment for now. And you just need to shift your attention. And maybe you've been kind of feeling that but you've been having trouble shifting your attention because who wants to leave the ten of cups we, most of us want to hang out in the ten of cups as long as we can right so this shift this little blip this anxiety inducing thing this interruption this interruption to your family time or you know to hanging out with your friends is going to come in but it is bringing you the two of cups you know Sure, on one level, the two is less than the 10, right? But what is the two of cups? The two <laughs> of cups is your your soulmate, your romantic partner, your divine union. So to run with that example of someone hanging out with their friends and family and then having this shift come through, it, it would be to bring you into closer harmony with your partner. You know, if you're single, this would be somebody meeting, meeting a partner um, and, and it, it will be, you know, true love. It's the two of cups. Um, and if you're already partnered, this would be finding a deeper union with your, with your current partner. And I know some of you are going to be Americans watching this on American Thanksgiving. So like this could be, you know, I know, um, I'm living in Washington state right now and we just had a lot of lockdowns go through and they're, you know, they don't want people, um, doing the family Thanksgiving thing. So a lot of people, a lot of families are going to be having Thanksgiving 
just with the people that they live with. They're not going to be having the whole extended family Thanksgiving thing. So this is actually, for some of you, it is probably literally that. Maybe you typically do a big family gathering on Thanksgiving with your whole extended family, or maybe you just get together with your friends, whatever. Then, you know, for this year, you just, you decide to go along with the restrictions. You, you, you know, play along with the lockdown. You don't get together with your extended family or you don't get to hang out with your friends. But this is actually for your benefit, okay? It is actually bringing you into the two of cups, into alignment. You know, for a lot of people, this could be, okay, so it's just you and that one other person that you live with. And you guys have a very intimate, very low key, but very, very personal Thanksgiving dinner with just the two of you, which is very strange. You know, a lot of people um, do the big, do the big dinner, right? <laughs> so that's what this is all about. This shift is, so just get okay with that. Get okay with that. <laughs> and whatever this, this crisis is that separates you from your larger community, you know, the card right here, nothing will come of the situation. Void, of course, moon. This card seems negative, right, at first, because it's like nothing will come of this situation. That sentence, every time I read that, I get a little bit of like, oh, you know, <laughs> it's a little anxiety inducing, but it's also good news. Whatever you're worried about is not a big deal. So this thing, this wheel of fortune blip moment, these lockdowns that are stopping you from hanging out with your family or from seeing your friends or any anything that is making you feel separated, whatever is coming through for you that is making you feel separated and is feeling like the rug is being pulled up from under you. Try to align with that. Try to align with that. Get okay with it. Go, okay, even though I don't like this, even though this is, isn't ideal, how can I roll with this? How can I explore what this is bringing in for me and invite that in? For example, you know, to just run with this Thanksgiving metaphor, if you are really, um, you know, resisting the lockdowns and just going, okay, you know, we're going to, we're going to all get together anyway. Um, I mean, sure, you can do that. That would be cool. But then you would actually be denying yourself the two of cups. You know, the 10 of cups isn't really going anywhere. If you're being separated from your friends and family, that's okay. They're still going to be there. You know, you can call them up on the phone. You'll be able to see them, you know, at some point in the future, they're not going anywhere. You guys are you guys are solid. You guys are 10 of cups. You guys are close. Your bond will not be broken by this temporary separation. And so if you decide to double down on hanging out with your friends and family, you are denying yourself the two of cups. And for some people, this could even be a moment where you are being called to um, build the bridge within yourself. You know, the two of cups, of course, isn't always an external person. This can be a spiritual experience with the two of cups. It can be building the rainbow bridge between two different parts of yourself. So if you're having a moment where you're being separated from your friends and family, um, or even if you're feeling separate, some of you, this feels, this is like a spiritual separation where you're feeling separated from your guides, feeling separated from source, feeling, feeling separated from your star family, from your soul family, right? There's a purpose to this isolation. There's a purpose to this severing. It is to get you to uh, come into harmony with two different aspects of yourself. What, if, if you feel like this is an internal thing for you, what is split inside of you? Is it your conscious and your subconscious not talking to each other, not on the same page? Is it your left brain and your right brain not talking to each other, not on the same page? You need to braid those two different aspects of yourself together. And that is what this isolation period, this alone time is going to be doing for you. And even more than that, it gets better. Look at this card. I don't know if you can see the text at the top. It says angelic light body. Okay. So this is a huge, huge, huge spiritual activation, um, an upgrade, an activation, like a Merkaba activation, activation to higher levels of your light body. And you need to be in isolation in order to do that. Uh, yes, it is possible to grow and evolve from connecting with our friends and family. And, uh, you know, I've really been learning recently how important it actually is to connect with people in human bodies, you know, actual people walking the earth, how activating that can be. So I'm not saying that, you know, interconnection is bad at all. However, when we have a major activation coming through, a lot of those activations need to be integrated when we are alone or, you know, with just one other person that we are very, very close with, like your twin flame or your, you know, divine partner, your soulmate, right? So 
That is the big takeaway here. In order to get ready for your next big shift, this activation to your light body, this coming in um, of this divine partnership or healing the bridge between two different aspects of yourself, you need to be in isolation. You need to be alone. Get okay with that. Just try, try to accept that. Um, and if, you know, if you guys are very much extroverts or very much used to operating in a team framework, you know, being part of a, uh, a team of souls or just being part of a family, you know, this can be very difficult for you, but that will also be part of facing your fears and purging that, that dynamic, purging that problem, realizing that you are always okay on your own and realizing that your, your group of people, your soul family, your friends, whoever they are, they're not going to disappear. Your connection with them will not be harmed by some time apart. This is all working out for your highest good. This is the archangels bringing this through for you. So just work through this as best you can. And just remember, you know, two of cups, <laughs> two of cups is on your way. And that's basically what I'm seeing for you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey pal three, welcome to your reading. I don't always look at the bottom of Oracle decks, but I had to mention this one before we even get started because this is the full moon eclipse. Conclusions are within reach. This is particularly relevant for anybody watching this right around when I post it, um, right at the end of November, because we are coming up on a full moon eclipse. This is happening in just a few days. So, you know, check when that's happening in your time zone. But I'm going to leave this card out because this is <laughs> this is somehow <laughs> relevant for you. And you guys, I think, are going through, you know, this is a bit of a tough time. But of course, these tough times never happen without without reason, you know, because right in the middle here, you got the nine of swords. This particular nine of swords is, you know, no more auspicious than many of them. You've got a skull being stabbed in the eyes by swords. You've got swords going right at your throat. Definitely, this is intense anxiety. This is feeling threatened. This is feeling like you can't speak. There's even a sword going up through your crown. Um, ascension symptoms. Some of you guys are probably feeling parasitic entities kind of dogging your tail or you're meeting them in dreams. This is you know, this is not fun. This is not a fun. And this is happening specifically, I think most of you, this is playing out in your physical reality because this is coming off of the anchor. This would be the emperor. Um, but in this deck, since it is represented as the anchor, I don't really see this as, you know, as a, as a person so much, although, you know, it could be, you'll know right away if, if you're thinking of a person that has like overbearing toxic masculine energy it could be them but i think for most of you this is getting at your security issues these are fears coming up to be faced and this is this is never pleasant you know i i can feel your guys's anxiety i can feel my heart you know tightening <laughs> it's not fun and i've been there you know i've <laughs> um you know i have my own uh you know financial issues right now. I mean, it's 2020. Most people haven't been working, right? So everyone, everyone is facing this fear of a financial lack of feeling like, you know, we're going to run out of money and we're going to be homeless, that kind of, that kind of thing, right? Um, you know, if you've been out of work for a long time, yeah, this is all happening um, in order for you to face this fear. Um, if you are worried about what's happening in the world, like very literally, like if you've been reading about conspiracy theories, if you've been reading about people's projections, um, you know, about what's happening, about why this is happening, uh, you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom scenarios out there. Um, you know, the general advice would be to kind of uh, put your attention elsewhere. <laughs> you know, reading all of those predictions isn't really doing anybody that much of a service, right? I mean, if you have been, if you have been looking up different predictions and, and theories about what's going on, that's fine. That you, that's, you've, you've been doing that because it is relevant for you to work through the fears that they bring up. Um, just be aware to like, not do that more than you have to, right? 
or for some people, this is just checking the news a lot, reading about the news. Um, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Everything is terrible. Everything is terrible. The news just brings you down, right? I mean, on some level, okay, yeah, we want to stay informed of what's happening, especially, you know, sometimes you just need to stay informed because, you know, your government might be sending you money and you need to know when that's coming through or figure out how to sign up for it. So all of that is fine. Whatever you guys have been doing is fine. And like, just to reiterate, you have been doing that because it is relevant for you to work through these fears. So that is why whatever you've been doing, whatever you've been fixating on, don't beat yourself up about it. It's fine. Um, it's re It was relevant for you to do that. However, now is the moment. <laughs> now is the moment to really question if you need to continue fixating on the news or continue reading predi or predictions about what's happening. Continue going down those rabbit holes of reading about the Illuminati and the global elite and whatever. Um, do you need to keep doing that? I mean, the answer is no. <laughs> um, you can do those things as long as you want. But if you're tuning into this, you're reaching the point where that no longer serves you. And it is time to leave that behind you. And it is time to start bringing in a lot more positivity, bringing in a lot more hope and really bringing, claiming your energy back, pulling your energy back, knowing that it doesn't matter what all these other people are saying. It doesn't matter what these politicians are doing. It doesn't matter what this psychic is saying, including me. <laughs> okay. It doesn't matter um, about prophecies or predictions or conspiracies or anything. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. What matters is your own internal journey, your own internal landscape, your own internal strength, your own intuition, trusting your own intuition to guide you, trusting that your higher self is looking after you. And you do not need to put trust or faith in anything or anybody outside of yourself. Of course, you can if you, you know, want to connect to source or if you like to work with any archangels, <laughs> this is an archangel reading, or work with any, um, you know, interdimensional beings or any deities you can absolutely do that but you know that you do not have to you do not need to put any trust in anything outside of yourself trust your own self even if you don't want to connect with your higher self i mean normally i would recommend that everybody connect with their higher self but if you don't want to do that your own self your own self in your own body you got this even if you did end up the worst thing happened and you became homeless you would somehow figure that out you, you're not just going to like die, right? Um, and it's funny that I say that because, you know, the death card is coming up, but this is not actual death. This is not you dying. This is you transforming, right? Look at this. This is two serpents twining together going for this rose. The death card is the transformation card. Um, anybody who's had a near-death experience or who has been near a loved one who passed um, or anyone that's had an ego death experience or anyone that's had a out of body experience, all of these experiences really, you know, teach us that death, <laughs> it, it's not what we think it is, right? It's not, it's not the end. No, nothing ever ends. There is no, there is no death, really. You just transform you, your energy leaves your body and then you go traveling the universe. So that's what you guys are about to do. I love to see the death card. It is one of my favorite fucking cards. I'm excited to see that, especially because you guys are coming off of this heavy, heavy, dense, fear-facing energy. Coming off the, the nine of swords, you know, if you guys have been very extremely anxious to the point of taking medication or having panic attacks, this is everything starting to shift. The death card is the biggest shifting energy that you can get. It's all transforming and look right here <laughs> this energy is gaining gaining momentum i think you guys can kind of feel this already happening it might feel like hitting rock bottom to you that's okay hitting rock bottom once you once you've really hit the bottom you know the bottom if you've hit rock bottom or if you've just gotten to the bottom of the bottle you know there's nowhere else to go there's no more liquor to drink there's nowhere to go past bedrock you've hit the bottom so now you're going to be bouncing back the energy is gaining momentum and what the Archangels want to bring through for you. First of all, you have Archangel Lumiel coming through. It's this beautiful green card with these mirror images of these triangles and you in the middle here. This is, I actually, I mean, this is light language. You can feel into this design however you want. 
to me, this speaks of you gaining your center, you understanding that you are the center of your own universe, you understanding that you have roots that go deep, deep into the earth, deep, deep into oneness with Gaia. And also your consciousness goes way, way up, way up into the cosmos, into the higher realms. And you are like the the trunk of a great cosmic tree with deep, deep roots and high, high branches. You starting to reclaim your power as a sovereign cosmic being. And this card in particular, Archangel Lumiel, is inviting you to get grounded, inviting you to ground. And I know for a lot of people, it's, you know, coming up on winter right now. <laughs> so this might be easier if you happen to be in the Southern Hemisphere. But for all of us winter people, um, you know, just that basic general advice always about getting out in nature if you can. If you can't walk bare feet in the grass, uh, you know, put your hand on a tree. Just sit on a park bench. Watch the wind in the trees. Have a conversation with Gaia. Do a grounding meditation. All of that will help you immensely. And grounding, 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 grounding as much as you can. You know, eat a bunch of potatoes, root vegetables, right? <laughs> ground, ground, ground. Um, that helps you. The grounding, that is what you need to do. That is the advice here from the archangels, right? And how you get ready for the shift. You get grounded because you have this security threatening situation. You have these fears of homelessness or poverty, or for some of you, this could be feeling like your actual physical body is being threatened. Or if you, a few of you might be so, like sensing parasitic entities, um, Grounding. Grounding is how you address that. That is how you find security, finding the security within yourself and in your connection with the earth. And <sighs> yeah, just for a few of you um, who might be, you know, feeling like you have these astral parasites dogging you around you can defend yourself. Okay. There are many, many ways to defend yourself. There are, you know, you can shield yourself, you can fight back, you can fight these parasites. And um, if, if this is really resonating with you, um, you know, I hate to like self-promote and advertise. I feel weird about it, but I did actually record a um, guided energy session, like a guided meditation that walks you through one way of psychic self-defense, basically one way that my guides showed me when I woke first woke up and I had a lot of problems with parasitic entities attacking me and my guides showed me a way to defend myself and it was a pretty you know quick and quick and easy way like a beginner's technique basically there are other ways so you know you don't need to uh you don't need to use my way there are many ways to defend yourself but if this is really resonating with you there's a link down below to my etsy shop um where you can you know shop around and see if you want to um check out that energy session that might help one or two of you um, who are really, really feeling afraid, really feeling like you can't defend yourself. And that will bring that ability, just knowing that you can defend yourself from uh, these threats, that will help you get grounded and transform. And then, you know, it's just onwards and upwards from there. You just need to get through this phase, through this anxious phase. And if you are having parasites come at you, know that this is just a phase. It is a sign that you are starting to shine more brightly shine brighter than you have ever shone before and that is why these parasites are coming at you um and you will get through this phase it's, it's like an initiation phase kind of like the awkward teenager phase of the spiritual awakening you get through it it doesn't last forever um you will learn how to defend yourself you will learn how to shield yourself and there are so many resources out there so just you know go with what resonates absolutely and just know that this does not last. You will. You will. I promise you absolutely get through this. <laughs> it's just like being a teenager. You know, if you could go back and tell your teenage self, what would you tell them? You will survive this. It gets better. You're not a teenager forever. So <sighs> yeah. Um, and for everybody else who this, you know, if this is a more physical reality thing for you, same thing, same thing goes. You're going to get grounded. You're going to transform and new, more positive, much more benevolent experiences are coming through for you. This energy is gaining momentum. So I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. So much love and light and luck uh, as you navigate this kind of difficult pocket that you're going through. And just, it's going to be so much better when you get to the other side. So I hope to see you guys again later. Bye.
Hey, Pal4, welcome to your reading. I gotta talk about this Opaline Spectrum card first because this is intense. This deck has, it has a bunch of Archangel cards on it, but then it also has a bunch of these kind of color cards, you know, red spectrum, orange spectrum, yellow spectrum, you know, kind of going up through, you know, the chakra colors or the rainbow colors. And this Opaline card is the highest iteration of these color cards, these color spectrum cards. It talks about... <laughs> You know, it goes all the way up through violet and silver and gold and all of that. And this is, this is it. This is unity consciousness. This is transcending the rainbow. It is unifying the rainbow. This is, you know, integration, coherence, unity, everything coming together. It's like, um, okay, you know, you have like clear light, right? Goes into a prism, shatters into the different colors of that we can see, right? The, the colors of the rainbow. Then if you take another prism, the colors of the rainbow go back through the prism and come out again is clear white light. That's you guys. <laughs> you can see there there is like rainbow colors on this card, but they're being put back together. You guys are massively healing many, r many rifts within yourself. You know, we have down here two of wands and the two of swords. <laughs> so... You know, I would say that, okay, you have some kind of duality based split going on that you're healing. But I think for you guys, it goes way beyond just two things. It is like, like rope making is what I'm seeing. Actually, somebody taking, have you ever seen anybody make rope? My dad used to make rope. He used to take, you know, I don't know, like 40 different strands of, you know, twine and you start weaving it all together, like roping it together, doing different rope tying tricks, yeah, you know, weaving all these things together to make one massively strong and thick rope that, you know, can now be used in construction, right? That's what you guys are doing. And this is like multidimensional. I think you guys have been connecting with your parallel selves, like across the board. Okay. You know, People do this in different orders, right? But all the all different all of the different ways you can connect with your parallel selves. You know, we connect with our past selves. We can also connect with our future selves. We can connect with the alternate versions of ourselves right now. You know, if you think of all of the different aspects of yourself or versions of yourself that are watching this video right now, every single iteration of you watching this video in all of the infinite instances of you watching this video, they're all slightly different. They're all in a slightly different universe. But then there's all, you know, all of the other aspects of yourself in other dimensions, in other realms that are not Earth, on other planets, in other universes, even for some of you. This is huge, <laughs> okay? And you are becoming like the flower of life. Like this, this, you guys know this flower of life image I got on the back here on this beautiful cloth. You're weaving your multi-dimensional consciousness, reclaiming your multi-dimensional consciousness. It's not like it needs to be woven because it's already there, but you're remembering it. You're coming back to it. You in your human body, you're reconnecting with your multi-dimensional consciousness. I feel like you guys would resonate a lot with this idea of omni-dimensionality. You know, you know, everyone talks a lot about how humanity is becoming a fifth dimensional collective and all of that. And I totally resonate with that. I I like that. I think that's awesome. I think it's happening. But I, I think <laughs> what a lot of people don't talk about is, but a lot of, some people do, obviously. And I think you guys are the group that would resonate with this is that it's not just about being fifth dimensional, right? Sure, we can evolve into the fifth dimension and stay there and be stuck there and work on slowly evolving to the sixth dimension and so on and so forth. Or we can tune into the fact that humans were are here. Humans are here to be omnidimensional. We have the DNA, the coding. Um, we are here to, to access all of the, the dimensions freely, with free will, not being stuck in any one of them, right? Um, maybe it is the case that the bulk of the human population is going to become fifth dimensional and then do the long, slow climb, you know, the long road trip tour through all the dimensions on their march back to source. But, you know, I'm becoming more and more convinced that it is at least one possibility, it is one future timeline that is available to us, for many of us, that we can 
blast past all of that. And once we make the shift, we'll be omnidimensional. We'll be able to flick in and out of whatever dimension, time, place, realm, frequency, density, what have you, completely free. We will be <laughs> the the beings that can do that. That was actually the point of humans existing, right? That was the point of everything that we've been through. Uh, the point of... <laughs> the point. That's the point. That is the point of humans, is that we can be omnidimensional. And that has been part of our plan all along. And that has been cooked into our DNA. We just need to wake up and remember that and learn to activate it. And of course, it's going to take us, you know... It might not be happening to us today. It might not be happening tomorrow, but that is the trajectory that we are on. And if you're tuning into this, you into this video and you picked pile four, that is a future possibility for you. <laughs> um, other cards you got here. Sovereign of Swords. Yes. Doesn't Sovereign say it all? The Sword of Truth. This is like, the sword also makes me think of like unification. We have a butterfly here. Transformation. This is intense. It also reminds me of the sword of Michael. You know, a lot of going on here, but I think it is also just your your sovereignty, your what am I like the sharpness of your spirit? Your belief in your own truth, knowing that you are the light in the darkness. You are like the the light glinting off of the sword. I I don't really have normal sense making English for this. <laughs> um but you guys are really fucking high frequency so I think you can just kind of feel what what I mean here. This is this isn't even about duality. I keep looking back at these two of wands and this two of swords which normally would be a duality thing, but you guys are like remembering and accessing aspects of your consciousness that are above duality. You're getting into the opaline spectrum and you guys have already been having experiences, whether you noticed them or not, you're already having multidimensional experiences. Maybe they're only happening in your dreams. You just don't remember them, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you don't remember them right now. That's totally fine because your human mind that is having this linear experience is like the tiniest little bit of yourself. So that's fine. Don't, it doesn't matter if you're not remembering this, you know, but in meditation, you guys have already, you know, at, you're already astrally traveling, whether you remember it or not. You guys have probably already gone back to source. You have traveled to other planets. You have been connecting with all kinds of interdimensional beings and Sorry, I was just distracted by this card here. Confidence is your key to success. New moon in Leo. Cat beings, lion beings coming through, inviting you to remember that you are the creator of your reality. No one else. <laughs> this is, you know, sovereign of swords, complete rulership, complete ownership of your own timelines, of your own journey. And I don't know, guys, <laughs> I don't really think, you know, there's anything else for me to say. This is just kind of a, a rant about how awesome you are and how awesome it is to connect with your energy. Y you know, there's nothing you guys need to do. You're, you're kind of beyond that step-by-step -step linear human action. I mean, at this point, all you need to do is trust in yourself and to continue to walk your path. You know, confidence is your key to success. Sovereign of swords. But I don't even need to tell you that because at, at your level, you're not going to be doing anything else. You know, this is just, I guess, a reminder to continue to flow your energy out into the world. In fact, this is cool because this Leo card, I just watched... Um, I mean, okay, for anybody watching this, you guys are starseeds, whether you know it or not. I know a lot of you are probably already into the starseed stuff. For some of you, this might be a new thing for you. Um, so for anybody who hasn't heard about starseeds or Lyrans, you know, the, the Lyran starseeds are from a planet called Lyra, and there are Lyran interdimensional beings, and, you know, they're associated with cats, with lions, 
in particular, right? And before I filmed this, I watched a channeling session. What was her name? I don't remember the name of the channeler right now, <laughs> but she was channeling, you, you could look up, the Lyran Council of Time. The Lyran Council of Time, uh, they call themselves Arian, um, or Ari <laughs> Arian, <laughs> A-R-E-O-N, R-E-N, I, I can't pronounce it, A-R-E-O-N. And I really found this video to be very profound, what this Lyran Collective was saying about how their main piece of advice for how to do anything on earth or how to get ready for the shift in consciousness, how to, you know, their main piece of advice was just keep flowing your energy out into the world, flow your energy out into the world because you need to interact. You need to flow your energy out there. You need to put yourself into the flow because your energy is so valuable and so powerful. Um, even if it hurts, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's painful, even if you don't like it, even if you don't like the other beings that are on the planet, even if you don't like anything that's going on, the solution to all of this is to flow your energy out there. You know, um, any, any kind of business, creative project, YouTube channel, blog, you know, posting on Instagram, you know, you can do it that way. You can also do it without leaving, you know, without actually being visible. You can, you know, practice Reiki, um, for the planet, you can just sit in on your couch and intend to flow your energy out into the world, whatever you need to do, however you want to do it. There is infinite number of ways to flow your energy out into the world, but this is the reminder to do that. You are powerful, <laughs> uh, old, wise souls. You came here with a mission and it is your, I almost wanted to say obligation, um, but I don't want to use that word, but that was the word that actually I could kind of feel coming through. Um, that's kind of difficult because I don't, I don't, I don't think we're ever obligated to do anything really, but, uh, maybe you feel obligated because you know that you came here with a purpose, you know, you came here with a mission. So maybe you feel obligated to assist as much as you can, and you will assist humanity, the collective, the shift in consciousness, literally just by sharing your energy, by putting it out there. And for you guys, that is probably, for most of you, that's probably a little anxiety inducing because you're probably, you know, highly sensitive. You're extremely empathic. Um, you're developing your multidimensional memory. You're calling back your psychic gifts, all of that. And that makes it, you know, you've been, you're weird. You're weird. You guys are weird. You're like me. You're weird. <laughs> um, so we don't like to put ourselves out there. That can be very anxiety inducing, but that's, besides the point, right? We got to put ourselves out there and flow our energy out into the collective as much as we can, because that's literally the point of us being here. So it's not that we're obligated to do it. I don't want to use that word, but if we come here and then don't flow our energy out into the world, we didn't get as much out of this experience as we could have. So <laughs> that's, that's the one piece of advice, flow your energy, flow it into the collective in whatever way is most resonant and relevant for you. <sighs> so I think that is what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you so much for existing and for putting your energy out there and for tuning in and for being awesome because you guys, um, I mean, everybody who watches my videos is soul family to me, but any of you watching this particular like group number four, deep, deep, deep soul family for me. So it has been wonderful and beautiful to connect with you and just sending you so much love and light. Bye.